I'm here with Tony Schmader. She's the Canada Research Chair in Social Psychology at the University of British Columbia, and she's presenting at the 2019 Women at Work Conference at INSEAD's Singapore campus. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. The STEM fields can be uncompromising contexts for anyone of any gender, but your research builds on the idea that women in these fields face additional psychological stressors uh, over and above those experienced by men. And why study STEM specifically? Why those fields? Well, I think STEM fields are a uh key occupations to innovation and technology, obviously, in society. They often happen to be the most lucrative career options for, for people. And so when we care about something like the gender gap in pay, a large percentage of that gap is due to the underrepresentation of women in these highly paid career options. In one recent paper, we asked men and women on a, a series of 10 consecutive workdays to tell us about the most meaningful conversations conversations they had at work that day, and to make a series of ratings about how they felt during those conversations, who they were talking with, and more generally how they felt at the end of the day. And we all know what it's like to come home at the end of the day and feel kind of tired, burnt out, mentally exhausted. What we found was that for women, those feelings of daily burnout were predicted by the degree to which they felt a sense that gender was something that was used to evaluate them that day. And that sense of being evaluated based on gender was more likely to occur in conversations with male colleagues where they didn't feel completely accepted or completely respected. One of the things that's interesting about that is that these conversations were not ones that were overtly negative or hostile. It's just the lack of being completely accepted at the same level. It's interesting because in pursuing gender balance, we often talk about numbers, and of course those are really important, uh, you know, hiring, promotions, salary, et cetera. Uh, but you're suggesting that there are also more subtle layers that we need to look at. I think that's right. So when I think about uh, creating balance or inclusion in an organization, you're right, we often think about, well, what can we do to increase the representation of women or minorities in that, uh, in that organization? But I think it's a separate issue to think about what we can do to improve the culture of inclusion. Because no matter the complement of the, the people in an organization, how they treat each other in an inclusive or non-inclusive way is uh, what really matters functionally for the psychological experience of, of people at work. Also talking about STEM, uh, you, you are the director of a research consortium uh, that's dedicated to bringing to light the hidden biases that block women from entering STEM fields. Yeah, let me start by saying, so the, the Engendering Success in STEM Consortium that, uh, that I started a couple of years ago uh, aims to, to try to understand the, uh, the complete pathway uh, or what sometimes people call the pipeline for young girls and boys to choose uh, to enter into STEM fields and succeed once they're there. So whereas my team is focused on women and men working already in professions and how they can be their most successful, we have other teams focusing on the transition of university women in engineering into their first job. We have a team focused on adolescence and uh, how do you sort of attract young women into uh, majoring in STEM fields once they go to university. And then we have a team focused on early childhood, uh, looking at when these kinds of male equals STEM biases uh, develop. Um, some research suggests that this think science, think male bias can develop as early as age three. How is that bias inculcated? How, did, how does it come about? Our brains are exquisitely attuned to uh, understanding pattern in the environment. And so when we see more men than women in science and technology fields, um, even as kids, we automatically learn that a scientist is more likely to be male than female, and so science equals male. In one recent meta-analysis, David Miller and his colleagues showed that, uh, that of all the studies where kids are asked to draw a picture of a scientist, um, they're more likely to draw a scientist as a male than as female. And although that, uh, that tendency has been diminishing some over the past few decades, uh, what you see is within a cohort that kids actually strengthen that association as they um, enter into adolescence and come into contact probably with more examples of famous scientists. 
you actually perform interventions to help men and women have a more accepting and a collaborative relationship in the workplace. Uh, how do you do that? What's unique about the workshop is we're trying to use a very evidence-based approach where we're combining not just kind of a typical education about what implicit bias is and how it can affect women and other minorities at work, but then pairing that with um, paired uh, structured dialogues between men and women where they mutually um, discuss their anxieties, concerns, experiences about uh, bias and how it can affect women at work, and then have them develop, uh, develop implementation intentions. So what do you want to do to try to become an ally to women or other underrepresented groups in your organization? And through these strategies, we're trying to foster the kind of supportive, respectful, accepting relationships that we've seen in our other research are so important for predicting women's daily success and productivity. So do you think that, you know, not to be too glib about it, but do you think that within every bro there's an ally trying to get out? What our own research suggests is that both men and women say that they're highly motivated to be allies in their organization, but they're not quite sure how to go about doing it. And so what we're trying to do with this intervention is to really equip people with the skills and strategies that they can use to be successful allies. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me.